It's a, it's a pleasure to be here, and I would like to, to thank the organizers for uh, giving me the opportunity to, uh, to present the perspective of uh, the European Commission on uh, financial education and more broadly on how we can uh, empower consumers. Uh, we are glad to see uh, uh, so much interest in financial education. Uh, it is indeed a, a key tool for empowering consumers and reducing the imbalance and reducing uh, information asymmetries between providers and uh, consumers in the financial sector. But of course, it is not the only tool that is available and it should definitely not be seen as a substitute for other measures that are needed in order to empower consumers. Our common goal should be to ensure that consumers can get financial services that enhance their quality of life, their possibilities to prosper, and to consume over their entire life cycle. The right financial services are crucial for people to invest in their education, become homeowners, and to provide for old age. And the wrong financial services will impoverish people, cause unsustainable debt, and even undermine the stability of our financial systems and economies. Just think of uh, debt-fueled uh, housing bubbles, uh, one of the worst of them, the subprime uh, mortgage crisis, was one of the causes uh, behind the recession uh, since, uh, behind one of the deepest recessions since the 30s, and we are still struggling with the aftermath of that crisis, and we have to bear in mind that actually we have a bigger debt overhang now than what we have, what we had uh, in the uh, 90s and 2000s, leading to the crisis. Um, empowering consumers means helping them understand how financial products can best meet their needs. It also implies giving them rights and the means to enforce them against unscrupulous financial services providers. And it means supervising financial institutions and the financial system as a whole to ensure that it is managed in a prudent and sustainable manner. Since the crisis, the EU has adopted a considerable body of legislation to achieve these objectives, but the work is not finished. We have achieved a lot in terms of providing more transparent information to consumers, stronger consumer rights, and easier access to dispute resolution, and this for a wide range of consumer financial services, be it for savings and investments, credit, insurance, or payments. All this is about hard law, and I would say that all this contributes to financial education to the extent that it enhances the consumer's understanding of different products and their rights when they purchase these products. But I must acknowledge that the EU and the Commission in particular do not do much to promote financial education directly. We do not impose legal obligations on member states to develop financial education programs. And we don't have, at least for now, large funding programs for financial education projects either. It is, we believe, for the member states to develop their own strategies on financial education. That's subsidiarity. Education is a member state competence, and in practical terms, it would be an illusion to think that we could raise the level of financial education throughout the EU uh, out of Brussels. But member states would be well advised to make the most of the consumer-friendly legal framework put in place by the EU. It is the interaction between rights and awareness that will bring about the empowerment of consumers and thus the best match between financial services and consumers' needs. Let's take maybe uh, for this uh, 
speech the customer's journey. It starts with a, a need for credit, for investment, savings opportunities, for insurance. Financial education is clearly important to, to understand those needs and the budget constraints that people face, not just at a given moment, but often over very long term uh, time horizons. Just think of decisions such as the purchase of a house or saving for retirement. Then the customer needs information on the different products on offer. Here, the EU has done a lot, laying down very specific requirements for a very wide range of products. Let's take some examples. We have rules on the calculation of the annual percentage rate of charge in the consumer and mortgage credit directives, enabling consumers to understand the true cost of credit and compare it across different providers. Consumers must also be given standardized information on consumer and mortgage credit prior to signing a contract, and investors must be given key information documents under MIFID or key investor information documents under the USITS directive. The next step would be to make it easy for consumers to compare the different offers. We have gone very far for one product, name, namely payments or current accounts. The payment accounts directive requires member states to ensure that comparison websites are made available to consumers. We will review next year how well these comparison uh, websites work. Uh, and under the uh, last year's uh, Consumer Financial Services Action Plan, we are looking at the quality of comparison websites and what could be done to facilitate switching also for other products beyond current accounts. More transparency in the market and easier product switching will result in more competition among financial services providers, and this should bring about better deal for consumers. While we are making it easier for consumers to look for information on financial products, there will always be new ways of reaching out to consumers. The data trails that we leave when using the internet can allow financial services providers to target their services more precisely to individual consumers. Valuable data can also be accessed by financial services providers thanks to open banking. The revised payment services directive recognizes a new type of service, account information services, which uh, could be used to analyze what offers could be targeted at individual consumers. This could be to the benefit of sufficiently financially literate consumers, but uh, let's face it, it could also create new vulnerabilities to scams. We have a number of safeguards in place uh, in this respect in the Payment Services Directive, but also thanks to the General Data Protection Regulation that entered into force in May this year. The main challenge here will certainly be the uh, effective enforcement of all the safeguards adopted by the legislator. Now, if, you, if we continue the, the customer journey after the purchase of a financial product, uh, we have to recognize that sometimes things will go wrong and consumers will discover that they are not getting what they expected uh, uh, out of the product and that their rights have been infringed. Not many would have the courage to take a financial institution to court. That's why it is so important to have in place alternative dispute resolution mechanisms. Under EU law, they have to be offered for all goods and services. For financial services, the Commission has been running a European network of financial services ombudsmen since 2001 already, primarily with the aim of resolving cross-border disputes. Ombudsmen can play an important role in educating consumers although they intervene, of course, rather late in the customer journey. But the information on the types of complaints they receive can be an important source of information on the most common complaints 
and this can help policymakers develop preventative strategies, be it through financial education, better product information and warnings, or regulations to protect consumers. There are situations when many consumers are harmed in the same way. In its New Deal for Consumers, presented in April, the Commission therefore proposes that consumers should be allowed to launch collective actions in courts whenever the rights of financial services customers, as laid down in EU legislation, are not respected. This could be a major breakthrough and would also contribute to better financial education thanks to the media attention that such representative actions would attract. The relevant legislation here is currently being discussed in Council and, and Parliament. The combination of better financial education and reinforced consumer rights will hopefully result in many more customer journeys with a happy hand but we will have to remain vigilant. As I said, enforcement will be crucial. Financial services that fully meet the needs of consumers will make a great contribution uh, to people's welfare and potentially also to sustainable development. Uh, and I am pleased that you will be devoting a lot of attention uh, to this topic today. Empowering consumers not only means that they can get better outcomes for themselves personally. There is considerable evidence that individual investors would prefer putting their money in projects that are fully geared towards sustainable development. They need to be empowered uh, to do that and also sufficiently educated to do that. That means giving them also information on the environmental or social impacts of various types of investments. Under its recent action plan on financing sustainable growth, the Commission tabled in May three important legislative proposals. The first establishes a unified EU classification system or taxonomy to identify economic activities that contribute to environmental objectives. Our second proposal will require institutional investors, investment advisors, and individual portfolio managers to disclose information on how they integrate environmental, social, and governance factors. And finally, the third proposal seeks to promote more transparent methodologies for low carbon benchmarks. Taken together, the three legislative proposals will bring the much needed transparency to the market of green financial products. Retail investors will have more confidence that investment products that are labeled as green or sustainable will really contribute to more sustainable development rather than having just been uh, greenwashed for marketing purposes. But let's also briefly look at borrowers. We should ensure easier access to credit for investment in energy efficient buildings, given that buildings in the EU are responsible for more than one third of the energy consumption and CO2 emissions. Consumers must be made aware of the costs and returns of investments in such improvements and the impact of their ability to reimburse credits taking into account uh, lower energy bills. So to sum up, uh, whilst the Commission is not a major player when it comes to developing financial education per se, we are doing a lot on other complementary dimensions of consumer empowerment in financial services. We will also have to monitor what member states are doing to promote financial education which is an obligation under the Mortgage Credit Directive. The European Economic and Social Committee is already very active in presenting good practices throughout uh, the EU in its brochure, Financial Education for All, which followed the opinion on this subject uh, drafted by Carlos uh, Chia Pinto in 2011. 
Let me also highlight the work of the European Banking Authority, which published uh, very recently its first financial education uh, report. This material should uh, provide a good basis for mutual learning and inspiration, and also for the numerous private sector initiatives on financial education. Financial institutions developing financial education activities may always raise some suspicion. Are these not uh, disguised marketing strategies? I don't think this would work very well. By contrast, we strongly believe that those financial institutions that have the most financially literate customers and manage to satisfy them will also have the brightest future. Thank you very much for your attention.